part two um, of a previous video I made. Um, I told, was talking about the blessings and the experiences that I've had with God in my life. And now in this part two video, I'm talking about the experiences that I had with tarot, the crystals, um, all of that. Because I was doing that stuff at one point, if you didn't know. So my first experience with tarot or, or anything occult, anything was 2018. Well, I was 16, turning 17. Um, so I also started getting the manifestation as well during that time, but mainly most of it was tarot and astrology. So Kim Carter's YouTube channel, this one girl, this one reader. I watched a couple of her videos, like dumb videos, like who's, who's going to be your husband or what's going to happen 10 years from now type stuff. Um, I didn't really look into any of the what's happening right now, what's going to happen in the next week type stuff until like a little later. When I started to get into the um, what's going to happen this month, that's when I began to really take it seriously. Um, I had this reading done in October of 2018 and I was talking to this guy this guy happened to be my my first love um what I thought love was back then um he was my first love and um the reading base was saying like oh you're gonna lose something that means so much to you but it's gonna be a blessing in disguise it says something like that right so immediately me being insecure and fearing everything, I was like, they talking about him. They talking about him. And sure enough, it was him. Like, he completely ghosted me. <laughs> See, that was like the first reading that I had that actually it happened. Like, it actually happened. So, that's when I started taking it seriously. I started getting more into astrology. started getting more into manifestation. And keep how in the reading, they say it's going to be a blessing in disguise, right? So... Talking from my perspective back then in 2018, in my eyes, it was a blessing in disguise because after that whole situation, after he ghosted me, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to love myself because for a long time before then, I did not love myself. All of freshman and sophomore year, I did not love myself. Simple as that. I didn't. So that's when I began to be like, I have to cut this out and I have to have some more self-worth and love myself more. And also start talking to God. I want to grow my relationship with God as well. Now, those are the good parts that came out of it. Now, that sounds cute, right? Sounds good. Oh, she learned how to love herself. Uh, she started talking to God. The only thing that came out of that, really, now, from my, from my perspective now, the only good thing that came out of that was talking to God. Creating my, uh, building my communication with God up again. And, like, what, the last time was, like, what, middle school? And this is my junior year of high school, beginning of it. That's the only good thing that came out of it. What about the self-love? What about the self-love? Listen, emotional and spiritual have two different effects. Emotions fluctuate. When you, spiritual, anything, like, if you have a spiritual feeling, that's, that's forever. At the time, I emotionally felt that way, but it didn't last. At the time, emotionally, not spiritually, my spirit was still, I had a, I still had a bad spirit at this time. I had a bad spirit attached to me still because whenever anything went wrong, I would get right back into that mindset. The only difference is freshman and sophomore year, I had that mindset every day. But junior and senior year, and some of even the beginning of college, I had this mindset, uh only when things went wrong. If things are going good, yeah. Um, it, just anything doesn't go my way, then those those feelings, that, that same Noel from five, four years ago, it comes right back. I Ever since I turned my life to God and I got the Holy Spirit, never had those feelings ever again. Never again. There's a huge, huge, huge difference between emotional and spiritual. And we say this all the time. Your brain is so powerful. 
you can literally lie to yourself this <laughs> you can lie to yourself and believe in your own lies that's how powerful the brain is that's how powerful the brain is and you know when you don't think this with with like the spiritual aspect of things your brain can trick you your brain can trick you and you can think oh i'm doing good i love myself i love myself and really you don't I'm about to go on a tangent. Excuse me. I should make a whole nother freaking video on this. But I'm about to go on a tangent, but I'm going to stop myself. I say all that to say this. This was a mindset that I was in during this time. I was lying to myself. I was in denial. Oh, I do love myself. Yeah, I do love myself. Oh, I deserve better. I deserve this. But deep down, subconsciously, I don't feel like I deserve anything. I've had the lowest self-worth. And that was the same year that I met my ex. There was a whole sociopath, and I stayed with him regardless of how bad he treated me. Now, if you really love yourself, would you really have put, put up with that? No. I would never put up with no type of behavior like that. And the reason why I did it back then was because emotions can't take you but so far. But spirit, when you have a good spirit, you have the Holy Spirit, you have God in your life, God will take you beyond, beyond the finish line. So, yes, what I got out of that was temporarily, I consciously, I walked around thinking I love myself more. But subconsciously, deep down in my spirit, deep down in my spirit, I did not love myself. The second big thing that happened, my tarot experience, the same girl, I only watched one girl the whole time. Now, this is later, this is 2019 now. Now. No, this is 2020. This is 2020. I just broke up with um, my ex. I'm feeling good. Like, uh, I, bro, I was happy when we broke up. I was happy. The fact, like, if you're happy when you break up with someone, you feel relieved. That means that person was not supposed to be in your life, y'all. <laughs> At the time, that was probably the best, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life was to break up with him. But you want to know the funny thing? Now, this is how the devil gets you. <laughs> I'm st the thing is, I was talking to God, still believing in God, still Christian, all that, but I was still doing that tarot stuff. Now, I come across this this video, and it so said, What's gonna happen next month or something like that? And this girl gonna tell me, Oh, you just got out of the breakup, and um, but guess what? This person is supposed to be your person, this person was destined to be with you, destined. This person definitely be with me. This one right here, the cheater, the liar, the manipulator. Also, she said, "This person is your twin flame." Like literally, just dead said that. This person is your twin flame, and I didn't really know about twin flames, so I did all this research on twin flames. And basically, um, long story short, I'm not even gonna get into it, into it. But long story short, your twin flame is gonna be in your life whether you like it or not. It's no choice. They're basically saying you have no choice. Like, if you hate your twin flame, they, oh, they're still going to be around. Even if they're not physically around, they're spiritually and emotionally around. Like, it was that type of junk. And, I, and, and like, bro, that one tarot reading changed my life. And I'm going to tell you why. It, it's almost like the more you believe, like, the farther and deeper you go into it, like the worst the effects are because the first time it was just like okay it, it didn't affect me too much it just affected me to the point where I was lying to myself every day saying I love myself and really didn't actually I believe the effects were more severe than just the fact that I was consciously in denial and lying to myself I believe when you're in a mindset where you think you're something that you're not um you can do no wrong. Like, it kind of put me in a mindset where, um, you know, my, my conscious and subconscious were battling. Consciously, I'm confident. I love myself. I'm a good person. I'm this type of person. I can do no harm. But subconsciously, it's like, I'm insecure. I don't feel good. I feel guilty for things that I've done. Like, when your conscious and subconscious are at battle like that, um you kind of develop almost 
if you think so highly of yourself and subconsciously you don't feel that way, spiritually you don't feel that way, you, nine times out of ten, you end up being having that victim mindset. Like, if things go wrong in your life, it's like, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? But in reality, it's not. that's not what's going on. That's just how you feel because you're so insecure and you yourself feel guilty for things that you've done yourself. So it's like, but if you consciously try to cover that up, you develop an ego. You develop this big ego to protect all of that. So actually, yes, it was pretty severe. Now that I believe that this sociopath is my supposed to be my husband one day, um, you know, at the time I'm like, I still don't trust him. I and I thought God was in this stuff at first. I thought he was. So this is what I thought. I thought that, you know, this guy was gonna eventually change and be a better person and be a good person for me. That's what I thought. Now this is May of 2020. Like, we are just, like, fresh, fresh in quarantine. Um, I started talking to this, I started talking to somebody. And he wanted to be my boyfriend. He wanted to talk to me for a long while. And I just never gave him the chance. But this time I gave him the chance. We're in quarantine, you know, why not get to know somebody? So, he, and I actually told him the situation. I told him everything about all that. Like, he, he is very aware that I just got out of the breakup. The tarot. I told him about the reading and everything. I was telling him everything. And he still wanted to wife me. So he asked me out. I said yes. Don't know why I said yes. Because I was not in the mindset to be in a relationship. <laughs> and another key fact. I, I personally, in my heart, was not ready to be in a relationship. Because I just got out of one. Just fresh out of one. We broke up in April. This is now May. And um, so I wasn't ready for it. In my spirit, in my heart, I was not ready for it. Not even in my mind, I wasn't ready for it. But when he asked me out, I literally said yes because of a tarot reading. <laughs> the tarot reading, I don't know how I skipped this part, but the tarot reading literally said, oh, in May, I see a soulmate coming into your life. And I was just like, oh, so this guy must be my soulmate. So I'm going to be with him because I think he's my soulmate. And that's what the tarot card said. Like, this is why... <laughs> Y'all, don't be messing with this stuff because it'll really have you looking so dumb. It really will. Another note. How does that even make sense? Why a month ago you told me, and mind you, I always went to the same person. I never went to different um readers. I always went to the same one every time. So why last month you said that my twin flame, the person I'm destined to be with, is my ex, and now... You're telling me about a soulmate coming into my life the next month. Doesn't that sound messy? That that literally is a setup for disaster right there. While I'm with this guy, uh, my ex hits me up. Now, I believe in what that tail stuff was saying. So when I when I see him and I see him, future husband. That's all I see. Future husband. Any other guy I'm talking to, they have zero chances. I'll talk to you. I'll entertain you. We could do this. We could do that. Cool, 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 cool. We could flirt, whatever. But I know you ain't my husband because right here, this one, this one right here is my husband. You're not. You're temporary. This one's my one. This one is my person. Sad. And so that, that's the mindset I was in. Now, I'm not going to completely blame that on the tarot stuff. But it's like, I really believed in that stuff with my heart and my soul. So, of course, it's like, okay, it, it influenced my actions. Do I take responsibility for my actions? Of course I do. I end up cheating on this guy. Yes, and I take responsibility for it. But never in my life would I thought, now, if you know me, I ain't built to cheat. That's not even in my blood. And I know for 1,000% fact, if I did not open that video... If I did not open that video, I would have probably had an actual cool relationship with the person that I was talking to during quarantine. I I actually, with that mindset that I had, two relationships, poof, just ruined. The foundation of it broken, just nowhere. Like, like no. <laughs> There's no cement between the bricks. It's just bricks on top of bricks. There's no cement. It's going to fall over. <laughs> 
And if you notice a pattern, um, I noticed a pattern as I was editing this video. Every time I did a tail reading, um, it will put me at a destructive mindset. It will put me at a mindset. The first time, it was a false ego. The second time, it was, this is my person and no one else is my person. So now I'm walking around with a false, with a f fake ego, and I believe that this psychotic man is my husband. It's going to be my husband one day. Like, I hurt a lot of people because of the mindset that I was in. And I've hurt myself because of the mindset that I was in. When you really put your heart and soul into something and you truly believe it, the effects will be true. It's going to happen. It's going to have an effect on you, your life, and your soul. That's, that's you, like... That's why I don't mess with that tarot stuff anymore. Because at the end of the day, the stuff, like, ooh, if I was still in that tarot stuff, I would probably be married to that ex. I would probably be married to that social path right now. I would not be surprised if I had your children right now, too. But I got out of that. I got out of that mindset. Thank God. Influence, the stuff you watch, the movies you watch, the music you listen to, the things you see on social media have a higher influence on you the people you hang around the family than you think looking back at all this stuff I, I look like wow that is so dumb that is so stupid like i really be looking back and like think about the mindset i used to have be like wow i'm glad i have the holy spirit now now letting you know now explain this to me if god is in the tarot if you believe that God is in zero, why would God want me to be with the same man that told me to my face, Noel, you're not flexible enough for me. You need to be more flexible. Oh, and I asked him, you know, when he, after he told me he, he thinks he's a sociopath, I asked, he told me that everybody in his life has a purpose, a, a distinct purpose, right? I asked him, so, you know, so what's my purpose? Oh, your purpose is to have sex with me. God want me to be with that person? Now explain that. Can you explain that? If you can't, those are like the two main reasons that had like the biggest effect on my life. But, you know, at the same time, during this time in my life, I was, I was lukewarm, but I was speaking to God. I was praying. And on top of that, it's not even just me. I have my family praying for me. I have my mother and father praying for me. I got my grandparents and aunts and uncles praying for me. Like, I come from a family, a God-fearing family. So, God watches over his people's descendants, his people's children. So, even if I wasn't in my right, doing the right stuff, my parents were, my grandparents were and did when they were, some of them were alive. So it's like, okay, I'm going to save her from this destruction. And that's exactly what happened. Enough with the tarot, enough with the tarot. We're going to get to these crystals. So, but the crystals were very short-lived. <laughs> the crystals were what, about three months maybe? Probably less than three months. Probably less than three months. Them crystals, first of all, even when, you know, I didn't have a negative um, view on crystals. I still didn't like them. It was something about them. I did never liked. I never liked, like, I was like, I don't like those. We actually did like a, a group meditation with these crystals. One of my friends brought her crystals and I was like, okay, I like these. These, I, I felt calm. I felt good temporarily. I felt good. So I was just like, okay, maybe I'll look into these. So, I even bought this book called The Crystal Bible to look up all the crystals and the, and the different things each crystal does. Now, if you don't know crystals, every crystal has a spirit or maybe even multiple spirits attached to it. I think there's only one though, but if you don't understand this, please look it up. Please look it up. I knew this before I was, a sa well, before I was saved. Like I was like when I was doing the crystals, I knew this. Crystals and tarot cards, they all have spirits attached to them. And each spirit has a different influence on you. Look it up. Look it up. So 
rose quartz. Long story short with the rose quartz, um, the rose quartz just attracted all the wrong people. Like, not once did, did that rose quartz attract somebody that was actually good for me. Let's just keep it right there. And one last thing with the crystals, because I don't... I, it was very short lived. I ain't messed with those crystals for too long. <sighs> I was hanging out with this girl, and um, this is before I even had my own crystals. She had crystals. I just told her, I was like, you know, this driving stuff, like, I can do it, but it's like, not, I can't do this consistently because I really don't like driving. Simple as that. And especially. Like, and I know you're the type of person, you want to do this and then go here and then go there. I'm not that type of person. That's basically what I said. Now, the girl couldn't drive. So I was basically driving her basically most of the time. Like, if she wanted to go somewhere, I want, you know, I was the driver all the time. So, like, as, like, tell me why, like, literally 30 minutes after saying that, 40 minutes after saying that, we actually get in a car accident. <laughs> we get in a car accident, baby. <laughs> and I'm like, Wow what the heck what the heck and it's like so what does it have to do with the crystal hmm. well i think it has to do with the crystal and i think it has to do with the person that was wearing the crystal because i think the person that was wearing the crystal has has a bad spirit attached to her and so when you mix a bad spirit and another spirit and that spirit is supposed to be working with her and how she feels what does that make what does that make so just letting y'all know, I 100% believe that um, bad spirits attached to people can influence your actions, can influence what goes around you. It's the supernatural. It is the supernatural. And if it's not of God, it's evil. It's wicked. So I 100% believe in that because that's not the first time that I dealt with a person like that. Um, I had a past friend that had animosity built towards me for years and for some reason whenever I hung out with just her and only her bad things will always happen it was always chaotic I almost got ran over by a bus I almost got ran over by a car and this only happened when I was around her so yes I 100% believe that spirits attached to people can influence um situations like that that's what I feel like but it still is kind of like, eh, I don't know. But all the other stuff, I know for a fact it was the crystals. I know it's like it was an influence on the crystals. And I know for a fact it was influenced by the tarot. That's the only thing I'm kind of like, eh. But I was just trying to connect the dots. <laughs> Not really why I don't mess with that stuff. Like, you give a crystal to the wrong person, <laughs> you in for it, girl. <laughs> Y'all, I look at stuff from a spiritual perspective. Like, it does like I don't care if something can something can make you feel good and spiritually be bad for you. I know that now. I know that now. I didn't know that before. So I look at everything from a spiritual perspective. That's why I don't mess with the tarot. That's why I don't mess with crystal. That's why I don't mess with none of that stuff anymore. Because when I look at it from a spiritual perspective, it has done nothing for me. It's only brought chaos in my life only brought chaos no nothing good came from it the only one good thing that came from it was i started talking to god again only because i thought god was in it when i realized god wasn't in it it had meant nothing to me it means nothing to me anymore you know, i i still have this up on my page on my it's all in my ig video ig tv um look at the rick and morty video like that basically is a perfect example of what goes on. You think you're getting something good out of it, but in reality, there's a curse. There's something that's holding you back. There's something that they're not telling you. There's something, there's just something, there's always something. You feel like you're being rewarded. You feel like you're getting gaining something, but you're really losing something more important than what you've gained. And it's so sad, bro. Like, And that's why I've been making these videos because I don't think people, a lot of people are not aware of this. Don't know this. I wasn't aware of it. Like, that's why I make these videos. Because I was that person at one point that didn't know these things. And ever since, ever since I turned my life to God and I live in fear of God, I have the Holy Spirit. Ever since then, you know, I've 
seen a big change. My whole life, my whole perspective has changed. And there's literally nothing holding me back anymore. I feel so good. And I know that it's not just a temporary feeling. I am permanently fulfilled now. I'm permanently fulfilled. I will never feel like I'm, I'm, I'm missing something. I will never, ever feel like that ever again. And having and being this spiritually healthy and safe and in God's arms, all I do is attract good. And even if it comes in the form of a challenge, at the end of the day, there's no such thing as losing. No such thing as losing. You either win or you learn. You learn to win the next time or you just win. That's it. That's it. There's no such thing as losing with God. There's no such thing as failure with God. But if you watch this video compared to the things that I've experienced with God in my life, a big difference, a huge difference. A tail card or crystal can never do the things that God has done for me. But yeah, y'all, you know, I hope y'all learn something. I hope y'all can use this video to reflect on your life and what God has done in your life. And if you are or have experienced tarot and crystals before, compare those two things. Compare those two things. Because I know there's Christians that think that that stuff is okay. Compare the two things. Which is greater? Exam like, really analyze. Like, seriously. Because this stuff is not a joke. It's literally spiritual warfare. So, um, yeah. God bless everyone that watches this video. Um... I hope y'all enjoy the rest of y'all days or nights. And bye.